Hey everybody, this is Seth Kinney, Keeping It Real. I am so honored and excited to share some super cool stuff with you today via Andres Campos. And I want to start by saying this, you guys. Stagnancy is the enemy. Action is king. If you've heard those phrases before, then you know who I'm talking about. I'm speaking right now to the co-founder of the Entrepreneur's Brand. He's a co-founder of a brand with 60,000 organic followers on Instagram. And it is not just any brand, guys. It's a brand that will arrest your attention. They create clothing design for hustlers and hustlers who are out there to create their own realities. And I'm convinced that no one is better suited to explain ins and outs of creating a successful brand like Andres. And so Andres, thank you so much for being here, brother. Cannot wait to hear what you have to say today, but I just want to say welcome, man. Oh, thank you so much, man. Honestly, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm super honored to, uh, to be invited to the event and specifically to be speaking. So I'm super, I'm super pumped. I'm super ready to get into it. So I got some questions for you. A lot of the people watching today would love to know more about Instagram. And I know you're not going to unload everything because you're going to be at this e-com event, e 2019. By the way, guys, um, if you want to meet Andres in person and see his team and some of the amazing clothing they design, go to justwindime.com slash e and you can find out more. And he has a special announcement later on in this interview. When you go to their Instagram channel, not only are you going to be arrested, your attention will be arrested with all of this clothing and this design, this brand, but how did they do it? And so brother, could you talk about how did you guys get started? How old were you when you started? Like what were some of those first steps? Those nostalgic days if you go back to the early beginnings of the entrepreneur's brand. When we started Entrepreneur, I was personally 19 years old. My business partner, David, was 18 years old at the time. I'm a few months older than him. But we started on Instagram. And, um, and so at the time, of course, the, uh, the Instagram algorithm wasn't taking place. And so it was very easy to jump onto Instagram and just by sharing, and I, I'm going to talk about a few things that I want to, that I want to touch up upon, um, as I'm speaking at the, uh, as the event, but now the dynamic has shifted. And so we started when I was 19 and we started this brand called entrepreneur and it's honestly been an absolutely incredible ride. And just, I guess, bringing the community together of hustlers and people who are out there and they're, they don't feel like they're in it by themselves or they have this community around them, kind of like what Just One Dime has become so powerfully, yeah. is honestly what I believe to have been the biggest catalyst in the growth of entrepreneur and what continues to be the biggest catalyst in all these other pages and all these incredible other brands and people growing their network and growing their community is people can relate to it. Kind of thing it's a factor of being able to relate to it yeah. and so i think that was what what was one of the biggest driving factors in our beginning and today still is that people see this in, this movement happening and they aren't so hesitant to jump in because they don't feel like they're by themselves right you mentioned relating to when people think about a brand they think of things like a logo a particular color a hex code maybe the look of a design or how someone wears their clothing, or how they walk, how they position themselves. And I know all that matters, but can you just elaborate a little bit relating to people? Like brands don't get built if people can't relate to them because it's all the brand's value is people's trust in what that logo or that symbol represents, something that takes years to build well. How, how did you find out how to be relatable? What was it that had to happen in your mind so you could take what's up here and put it out there in the world and then people connect with that? there's a few things that you have to fulfill in order to become a brand that you're the brand that you're destined to be. And right. it really comes down to, so on the back end, on the physical side, you need to have quality products. You need to have incredible customer service. Um, and honestly, these are things that are often overlooked. You need to have awesome branding. So like everything that we do, all of our packaging, everything is branded with what entrepreneur is. And then on the front end, on the social aspect of things, we're driving forward this vision, this, this idea that anything is possible if you set your mind to it. But what we did differently as opposed to, you know, just go on social and then just preach something and say, oh, you need to work hard or, oh, you need to just do this or put up quotes. And this is something that you specifically do is that you put up, you put up 
things that you can relate to, that you personally relate with, things that come to your mind in, in, you know, in relation to what entrepreneurship or working hard or creating your own reality is all about. But most importantly is that you go out and you take action. Yeah. And I've always said that the number one way to learn is to be led by example almost. And so seeing someone do it, seeing someone create something, seeing someone uh, bring something to fruition or to fulfill a, or manifest something that they put their mind to is what I think one of the biggest, you know, one of the biggest things that happens that says, oh my God, you know what? Maybe, maybe it is possible for me. Right. Maybe I can go after it. Maybe I can do this. Maybe I can create this product or this service. Yeah. And so when we create our products, it's a combination of things. So we create products that we understand that we personally like, first of all, which I think is the number one factor when it comes to creating something for us is do we like what, do we genuinely like what we're creating? Can we, as entrepreneurs, as young guys, you know, we're 23 now, can we relate to this and can we see the purpose behind this? Yeah. And I think when we create something that, you know, we genuinely like as entrepreneurs, as risk, taper, t risk takers, as creatives, then I think everything just kind of tunes into that and people fall, in, fall into that as well. And so they become enamored with this vision. That's ultimately, ultimately what we're trying to do is create the community with people who are, you know, tuned into the same exact vision. Yeah. So you mentioned doing something that you love and building something that you believe in. So people sense this is something real because it's coming from your heart. It's an emanation of who you are so right. they to that. And, and it makes them want to move to action. But here's my, my question, Andres. There are so many people who are thinking, yeah, I like that idea. Yeah, I think what Just One Diamond does is great. What Entrepreneurs does is awesome. What these guys are doing is great. But they stop there. Like they like it. They applaud it. They praise it. They give emojis to it. But they're still not acting. And it's here, but it hasn't moved to their hands and their feet where they're actually doing it. What would you, how could someone who's right now watching this and like, you know what? I know there's an opportunity. I know there's money waiting to be made and freedom and adventure and learning and growth and pain and all this. But man, I just, I don't know how to get to action. Right. What would you say to this person who, and, and I think you're qualified because just for a moment, guys, Andres was 19 years old and your co-founder 19 as well, right? Correct, yes. When they started, 19 years old. So don't take this offensively. You guys were kids, <laughs> right? A lot of older people would say you were young and dumb, but I would say you were young and furious, man. Right, right. <laughs> so what is it that keeps, what is the difference between someone who acts and someone who just keeps thinking and talking right. and, and commenting, but they're not actually doing the work and moving to action? Right. You know, we, we talk about how young we were when David and I started, um, but the fact of the matter is, I think the younger you are, the more, you know, naivety there is to go out there and chase what you're after. But I think the problem then becomes, or not the problem, but rather the stump in the road becomes where the inactivity or the lack of action that has happened, you know, from thinking about something so much, it really just comes down to, you have to make that decision inside of you. You have to say... Today, I, I am making the conscious decision to change my life. I am making the conscious decision to go after what I know I am capable of doing. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm making the choice to change my life and, and to ultimately act on it. And so I've always said it, it does not, there is nothing negative. There is nothing absolutely negative that can come from saying, I'm going to do it. I'm making the conscious decision. And that same day, after you've gone through your workday, your traditional, you know, nine to five or whatever it is that you do, yeah. and taking two hours of your day, one hour of your day, that yeah. I know we all have. We yeah. all have. Yeah. If you Turn off Netflix, on, put down the PS4, right? You know, <laughs> you're on the PS4, you're on your Xbox, or you're playing computer games. Right. And you just have to make that choice, you know? Are you going to sacrifice today for a greater tomorrow? And I feel like a lot of people say, okay, you know, that's a big commitment. It's a big right. sacrifice that I have to make. Right. But guys, you, we need to change our outlook on taking on an endeavor. Rome wasn't built in one day. It was brick by brick. And this is no different. Entrepreneurship is no different, right? Making that choice to be great is no different. It's the consistent one day progress that you have to commit to, to make that ultimately leads you towards it. So it's just, you got to do it. Yeah. You're going to decide to change your life.
Yeah. And it's okay if you're afraid. It's okay if a thousand excuses flood your mind before you make that decision. If you're I had a dollar for every time that I was afraid I did something, or yeah. if I had a dollar for every time that I was, that I, du you know, double question myself if I was going to do something. Right. I was listening to a podcast of this, of this gentleman, Alex Banyan, and this guy has basically interviewed the most elite performers in the world. We're talking Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, um, and, and Elon Musk. And he specifically said, he said, look, every time that I have asked or, or interviewed or done a session with, with any of these high profile individuals, I always ask him one question. Have you been scared? Do you feel scared? You're almost like you're not even human. Do you feel frightened? Yeah. And Elon Musk specifically, I know, and I'm a huge fan of Elon. And now he always said, he's like, look, every single day I'm afraid. Every single move that I make, I right. question it. Right. And you just have to do it. You have to do it. Yeah. It's almost like fear becomes a friend who's always going to be with you. And you become okay with that. That's a natural fear. In fact, it's probably a sign, everyone, that if you are afraid, it's probably a sign you're doing something right. Because if Absolutely. there is zero risk in your decision, there you go. fun is there in that? What kind of life is that? If yeah. everything you do is, I mean, why do people go to Disneyland and Six Flags and all those, you know, the, the rides that make you scared? Because it feels good. There's a rush. You know so, nothing bad is going to happen. Right. There's certainty that nothing bad is going to happen. But Seth, let me tell you something. Fear is what, what I've come to, you know, conclusion. What I've come to work with when it comes to fear is, Fear is the signal of your body telling you that it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you a question. Has, have you witnessed anything? And I know this is, you know, like a, a phrase that's tossed around, but have you genuinely ever witnessed anything of significant value happen in the comfort zone? No. The question Not a single is time in my entire life. I'm thinking back all the way to when I was very young, all the way till now, even as a child, even as a child, wow. everything significant had to have some moment of fear. Like, is this going to work? Should I do this? Should I invest? Should I take that risk? Should I talk to that person? Right. Every single one. And, and it, it's not like, I think over time we can handle as humans, we can handle bigger and bigger risks, but the fear is always there. But if here's how I know if we've plateaued, the fear is no longer there. Everything's comfortable. Everything's easy. And guess what guys, that it's like riding a bicycle you have to keep moving. If you stop at some point, you're going to fall over. I, I believe the real danger to be being comfortable enough that you're not willing to risk the probability of living the way that you have already continued living and will continue to live. Like nothing is going to change tomorrow. If you wake up and decide I'm going to continue to do what I've already been doing. Yeah. I think the real danger is, not going after it because if you don't you literally remain where you already were right let's get really tactical just for a moment andre so talk about instagram there are a lot of people watching like man i want to build up my instagram channel are there certain times how did you get yours to 60 what are some of the steps you take you know is it engagement is it the photos is it the videos what it, how can someone take what you said the fear, the branding, the personality, something relatable, something of value, something you love, and turn that into a specific platform, customized, respecting the nuances of it, and grow it. What are some, if you were to give like one, two, or three tips, like guys, here's what I recommend you be doing constantly every day on your channels, what would that look like? Number one, without a shadow of a doubt, is maintain originality through and through. Hmm. Originality is king, especially in today's online world, especially on Instagram, especially on Facebook. And if you really look at it there for every niche or every, you know, specific personal branding that you see happen, the ones who are doing what everyone is doing, the ones who are doing, I guess, what I like to call the cookie cutter template, those are the ones that don't end up growing. Those are the ones that don't end up scaling. And so number one would definitely be originality. Number two, I would say, to share your story, hmm. share your story. Your story is the most powerful thing you have. Yeah. And the ability, the idea of being able to command that story, right? With the decisions we make on a daily basis is what will ultimately make your story more and more and more, not only interesting, but inspirational, uh, but moving. And so you already have a story. We all do, right? Yeah. 
Tip number two is share that story. Be yourself. But the important thing is, is to grow that story, to continue that story through consistent daily action taking. And so it's like, it's almost like a journey. Like you are on your own journey and you are showing people how you're doing it. And right. through that, people are going to notice and understand and, and catch on your authenticity right. and realize that you're just a regular person. You're just a regular guy or gal and you're just on your journey. And the results that you're achieving along the way as you take action is what I ultimately think is going to, or what is going to continue growing uh, your Insta uh, Instagram account. Yeah. And then really, so yeah, number one is originality. You wanna get creative. Uh, number two is sharing your story. Be true to yourself. And number three, I would say just, you know, interacting with as many people within your, I guess in your tribe or right. interacting with as many people within your social circle as possible. Yep. You know, a lot of people go on Instagram and they utilize this Instagram just to, you know, post a pretty photo right. or they'll say, oh, you know what? I'm just going to talk about the experience I had today at the pool. But guys, Instagram is affording us so many possibilities and it's so overlooked and people, it's okay to use it as a social platform. I mean, that's what we use it for, right. but there is so much more potential to it. There's so much more potential to inspire others. If you don't want to inspire others, that's okay. If you want to generate revenue, if you want to generate dollars, if you want to build your personal brand, then you can do that as well. There is nothing stopping you. And the fact that it is so open source in the sense that you can go on there and just share who you are yeah. is your biggest right. asset. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's your biggest yeah. asset. Yeah. And what I love about what you're saying is nobody can compete with your story. No uh -huh. one can. People talk a lot about differentiating products. What about differentiating ourselves? No one can compete with your story, Andre, because they haven't lived your life. They haven't been in your skin. They haven't had your experiences growing up, what you're doing now, the challenges, all of that makes it unique. And therefore, the more people see that and the struggle and the victory and everything along the way, that's really incredible. Now, there's something you guys have done, which I really love, and everyone, I encourage you to listen to what I'm about to say. A huge part of being an entrepreneur who succeeds is understanding the industries you are in. And Andre is in, in my opinion, you're in two industries, brother. You're in fashion and you're also in the world of entrepreneurialism. Now, the cool thing is both of these emanate from you as a person. You are an entrepreneur. You do like fashion. And yet that also is your product. How do you integrate those in a way that is unique? There, there's, I think there's a lot of companies, they're so focused on this they don't see this part and they don't take off. Right. How did you do it? I think it's one of those things that, as you mentioned, naturally comes to me as an individual. I've always been into fashion. I've always been into, I've always been kind of like, I guess, a creative person. And I've always like deconstructed things and reconstructed them as a kid, as a right. little boy. So I guess the incorporation of all these different aspects into one and then being able to now it had, I have to make it clear that we were also very fortunate to have such an incredible community already on Instagram. And people often overlook this as well is that you might think that your products or your personal brand might not have a space in the social world of Instagram. But if there are people out there, right, if there are people who are making who are into wood wood shopping, right? And they're making wooden clocks and they're out there and they have 150,000 subscribers or there's people who are into, you know, gardening or hydroponics and they're, they have hundreds and thousands of followers. There is so much opportunity out there. And the fact that we came in and we had such an incredible community already there, like-minded individuals waiting for us. And we created these products centered around what they are, around who, who they are and what their identity stands for and being entrepreneurs and risk takers and creators and hustlers and really just coming in and, and finding those people through the posting of original content, the posting of authentic content, showing our story, showing that we're real people. I think what is what honestly has been the biggest thing uh, when it came to growing our, our account. So it really just comes down to just being yourself and just going for it. Just post it, launch that podcast, launch that blog, whatever it is, just do it. The funny thing is, I am one of those people. As you were saying this, and I hope this encourages you guys watching, maybe you're saying, you know what, I'm going to be the next amazing designer of remote controls. I'm going to bring these out like no one's business. 
and, and you have a unique take on it that no one else is doing. And really quick, guys, sometimes you're so focused on the product, you're forgetting what Andre just said. How about focus on who you are and how the product is an emanation of what's already in you? And that's why when I asked you the question, how did you integrate the entrepreneurialism and fashion together? You pause because you're like, this is who I am. How do you answer that question, right? It's an emanation of who you are for years. So when it comes from who you are, the product is a byproduct of you. And since you are unique, it's already freaking differentiated. And there's already, and I love this, man, there's already people out there who want this, who, who want to wear the clothing. And it it's not like you have to go make them into followers. They're waiting to follow. You just have to tell people, oh, by the way, boom, here it is. Like, that's it. That's what I've been waiting for. And you know what, Seth? In a parallel manner, this is what you specifically preach to your warriors when you tell them, guys, look, if you're looking for a product, what do you do? One of the, one of the parts that you, uh, that you have to take action of is you need to go on specific products, these prospects, look through all the reviews, find what people don't like about them, what is faulty about them, what don't they like about it, and then putting into what you like about it and presenting that to the suppliers and saying, hey, we need to make this better, we need to fix all of this, we need to incorporate this, and you emanate yourself onto that product. Yeah. But now that product is much more enhanced than its original version. Right. And so that really is the, the, the plan. It's to put everything of who you are into it. And there's already someone out there who likes it. If yeah. you genuinely put the time into a good, efficient, optimized product that works and has great quality, there's already people waiting to buy it for you. Guys, I'm super excited to share this with you. You have the chance to meet Andre. He's going to be at Ecom 2019. This is a conference. Let me be very specific, guys, so you understand. This is an event for people who are tired of living the nine-to-five corporate slavery. This yeah. is the people who are saying, you know what? I I'm done with the death by paycheck cycle. I actually want to build something that I care about, that I love, that creates margin so I can do the things I love with the people that I love. And the reason we invited Andres to be here is not only does he live this out the first time, I heard from you guys when you reached out, that message stuck with action is key. Like it's so resonating with my heart. I was like, yeah, that's, that's exactly what we are. That's what we do. I want you guys to be able to hear from Andres all of this, how he did it, how he started at age 19 and built this brand that truly is world-class and it stands out. It, if you're going through Instagram and boom, you see the entrepreneur brand, all of a sudden you stop. Like you really stop and say, huh, this is different. What is it about these guys that you don't feel like they're just reposting a bunch of quotes like you had mentioned or some people do that. Let me just repost a bunch of quotes. Well, that's fun. <laughs> like everyone's sharing quotes. It's actually unique. It actually has value and depth. And, and guys, he's going to be there talking about how you build a brand in a very noisy social media world. How do you stand out? How do you build something that people love and they become passionate about and they respect and they resonate with? And I just cannot wait, man, to hear the full thing um, in Los Angeles. I'm super excited. We're going to talk a lot about, you know, separating yourself from what, who everyone else is out there, everything that's out there. We're going to talk about our specific strategies that we implement and how you can implement them too in regards to how we built Entrepreneur, how we continue to build the branding that goes around it. We're going to talk about gaining independence from Amazon and, you know, diverse, diversifying your sales channels. Um, you know, we're going to talk about a lot of things. And honestly, I'm just so excited to be in the room with so many incredible people and all that amazing energy. Um, I was looking at some of the clips from last year's event. And man, I am so excited for this. It's going to be really fun. I'm super excited. Imagine you guys being in a room with people who are on fire to do nothing less than build the life of their dreams through e-commerce, brand building, Instagram, online social media. And they all have this one goal. And some of those people are multimillionaires. Some of them are brand new. Some of them are even from Amazon's leadership itself, which is crazy. Amazon's never, ever come to a non-Amazon built, Amazon-owned conference until this one in the last decade. So Amazon leadership will be there as well. Guys, this is like the most unique combination of speakers and trainers I've ever seen at any conference focusing on e-commerce. And that's why we handpicked people. We don't just say, oh yeah, we see this person a lot. And like, let's get that person again. No, we really thought through who do we want there. And I'm so proud, Andres, you're gonna be there, man. Let me ask you 
let me ask you this, brother. Just real quick. And guys, just so you know, I didn't prepare him this question at all. Ten years from now, man, where would you love to be? Like truly, like ten years from now, what's happening? What's your life look like? What are you doing? That's a good question um, because it's not, I feel like not a lot of people often think about what it is that they want or where they project themselves in a certain period of time. Yeah. But in 10 years from now, everything at scale. So I, I want to personally get into actually helping people as well. Same thing that you're doing, you know, you're bringing all these people together using your, you know, such a powerful influence to bring so many people together and give people the opportunity because that's what it is. This is an opportunity. There is not a lot of times where you can just walk around and find someone who's hosting one of the most comprehensively powerful get togethers in regards to Amazon, to branding, building your company, escaping the nine to five. And I've come to see it as an opportunity. Um, so that's definitely something that I, I want to get into is to, you know, follow in your footsteps, I guess, to say, and, and inspire so many incredible people to do, do what they want to do because that's what it is. You're not out here telling them you need to do this, you need to do this. You're saying we're going to give you every single resource that you could possibly have a culmination of tons and tons and tons and tons of years of experience because I'm not the only person on the panel who's going to be speaking. There is an, a bunch of other killers out there who are going to say incredible things. So that's what I'm most excited about. And, and honestly, I see myself in 10 years just continuing to grow entrepreneur, continuing to grow the brand, bringing so many people together, of course, um, diversify uh, what I'm currently doing and jump into other projects as well. But honestly, just overall, just continuing to move forward and trying to bring as many people with me as possible. What I love about that vision, Andres, is you didn't start by saying, hey, the first thing I want to do is simply teach people you're doing it and now your teaching comes out of what you're doing exactly yeah. what just when dime was founded on i didn't start out and say oh i want to have a youtube channel oh i want to be no i just found a way to make it work i'm like this is awesome and then but wait a minute people were looking for this and then it grew from that that's what i love about let me ask you a question seth because yeah. a lot of people might see what just one dime or what entrepreneur has come to be and they question whether or not there was like, I guess like that evolutionary period of you were no one or you were just starting out to being the person you are today, the incredible company you are today. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about that middle stage? Like people don't understand that you started by taking one single action, right? Yeah. Did you wake up one day and did you have tons and tons of people in, in the community? Of course not. You started out, you got little by little one person here, one person there, and eventually that snowballed when everyone started seeing the value, when everyone started seeing the opportunity that lied beneath this, and you've kind of just grown with that, and, and people, people need to go out and just do it. Like, it really comes down to that. Yeah. And Andres, I think that's why people at Just One Dime are so passionate, is because the way it was built wasn't, hey, here's this huge plan to build a coaching company. And that's not wrong. Some people can do that. It was, this person needs help. Literally, my neighbor down the street came over, we sat in our living room, our, our dining room and we just sat there and I helped her like here's how you do it and then all of a sudden two of my sisters are asking for help then someone else asked for help then someone it was one by one helping people succeed and that all of a sudden began to grow and then it grew to a point where it's like shoot I don't have any time left in my life right. so now we have to build it to scale and that's when we started bringing in other successful sellers whom we'd raised up so they could now teach others and it just it's organic you know, I'm not against ads, but it's organic. In fact, we never ran a single ad for our membership until two, um, one and a half months ago. First time we ever even ran an ad, man. First time. There you go, guys. First time they ever run an ad. A month and a half ago, two months ago. There you go. And look how big you've you know, managed to get. It's crazy. Yeah. That's the power. But that's the power, right. though. Like, yeah. there's, a, there's plenty of people out there who are running hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars into their company or into their course or into their their program and that's what they have to do in order to grow yes. but when something is authentic when something yeah. is real when something has substance and it has value to it it grows organically and that's what i specifically admire about you guys is being able to grow something so significant organically too so that's amazing thank you, man. amazing thank you and Andres, thank you so much for being here. Guys, again, this is Andres Ocampos. He is the co-founder of the Entrepreneur's Brand. Where's the best place for people to find you, what you guys do, and to get those badass shirts? <laughs> Tell us where to go. 
You guys can find us on Instagram at, at entrepreneur. It's E-N-T-R-P-R-N-R-C-O. You can find us on Facebook or you can go directly to the website, www.entrepreneur.co and we're all there. And guys, what's, what's cool about the name, easy way to remember it, they're efficient. They took out all the extra letters and you still read it the same. <laughs> <laughs> you add a CO and you're good. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And guys, go to justonedime.com slash ecom if you haven't signed up yet. Um, we have two different levels in the, at the ecom 2019 conference. One of them is completely sold out, but the one that isn't sold out, Andres will be there. A live Q&A panel will be there. A guy who took who started from scratch on Amazon and in a matter of six months to three million, he will show you exactly how it's insane. insane. Three million in six months. Like, I wish I could have said that, man. <laughs> All under one roof, too. And guys, there's going to be three parties as well. So you have an opportunity to trade phone numbers, to meet people, to talk to them, to network. Sometimes the most life-changing meetings happen at these events. And then later you just, you go apply it to your life. You just call that person. Oh my goodness, this is an awesome resource. I had no idea. Like there's a supplier who lives in Los Angeles. They're going to be there. They help with private label links. So you can actually source in the US, which has massive advantages. Guys, I could go on and on and on and on. But again, Andres is going to be there. Do not forget, go to Instagram. Entrepreneur, just take out all the vowels except the first E, add a CO at the end, and you have it, baby. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm super excited. I'm going to see you guys in uh, two weeks or so. So let's, let's, let's crush it. Let's crush awesome. it. Cool. I'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.